Hello everyone. In this video I will show you how to use ChatGPT with a knowledge graph so that instead of having to use an interface like that you can use something like this where you can see the main concepts, how they're connected to one another, the relations between them, the main topics and also identify the structural gaps or what's missing inside this discourse which can be particularly useful for long ChatGPT conversations or if you're learning something. In fact, this approach can be interesting for two reasons. One is that it's very useful for humans because uh, when you have a direct visualization of the main topics inside your discourse, you have a much better idea of what it's about and how to develop it further. Knowledge graphs are also very useful for the AI itself because when I'm prompting the model, I actually add structural information about the ideas that I'm talking about. So, for example, I can say that knowledge graph is connected to the notion of coherence or text generation. And when I'm sending prompts to the model with the knowledge graph easily available to me, this information is added into the prompt so that when I generate insights, uh, they will be much more precise because I'm going to include uh, these ideas and connections between the concepts into my prompt. So the results are going to be much more precise and much more interesting. If you're interested to learn how it works, keep watching and I will demonstrate using a real example. In fact, I would like to show two approaches. One is to use a knowledge graph with an already existing ChatGPT conversation, which you can simply export and visualize as a graph. And another approach is to talk to the graph itself live. We will be using a tool that's called Infranodus. So let's go to the first approach. I have a conversation here where I was talking to ChatGPT exploring a certain topic. I think it was about knowledge graphs and uh, how they work and all the different implementations of vector models and so on. So actually, I would like to remind myself what this conversation is about. And of course, I can ask ChatGPT itself, which I did here, as you can see on the screen. And it provided me an answer, but it was quite generic. I didn't really get to the gist of this conversation. And I remember what it's about, but it's kind of difficult to understand uh, how I can develop it further. And then even when I ask it, what do you think we can discuss? You know, it gives me some very general responses, which are quite generic. And that will be even a bigger problem if the conversation is too long. So then it's just going to steer away from the specifics. So that doesn't really work out. Instead, I can copy and paste the link to this conversation here. And then I go back to Infranodus. And I go to the apps page, create a new text graph, paste the link, which I just copied. And I'm going to give it a different name. So for example, Infranodus, knowledge graphs, test. And I'm going to ask Infranodus to visualize the entities which are detected in my conversation. I can also analyze the words themselves and then the result is going to be much more granular. But in this case, I'm going to go for the entities so I can also demonstrate to you how it works when you extract the most important concepts from the text and not everything. What happens here is that Infranodus will take the contents of this conversation and it will import it as a text graph, visualize the main concepts as the nodes and the relations between them as the connections in the graph. Then it aligns those entities, nodes, which are detected in the text on a two-dimensional plane. And those concepts which appear more often together will be shown closer to each other on the graph, like for example here in this case or in that case here. And they will also have the same color. So then already one of the advantages here is that as a user you get a direct visual feedback on the content of this conversation. And if I click here, I can give the names to those clusters using the built-in AI. So then I quickly understand what this conversation is about. I know it's about knowledge graphs, it's about semantic vectors, but also I've been talking about cultural experiences and even Parisian art. So that's quite interesting. It reminds to me actually that uh, when I was talking about knowledge graphs to ChatGPT, it proposed me to use it for travel recommendations. So let's zoom in. For example, I can see that when I was talking about vector spaces, uh, I was also talking about semantic and understanding. And if I click on those three terms, I can see what else they're connected to. So they're related here in the analytics panel. I can see they're related to knowledge graphs, um, BERT and GLOBE. These are different vectorization models. And if I click here, I can see exactly the part of the conversation where we've been talking about that. So here it says uh, that uh, 
um, it's probably one of the advantages that uh, vector representation can provide, enhanced understanding. And using those models, I can uh, get or capture semantic meaning from text and therefore enhance my knowledge graph. So that reminds me about an aspect of the conversation that I find very important. And as you can see, I know where to jump into this conversation as a user because not only I get an overview of the main topics, but I also see how they connect. So I can quickly get to the parts that I find interesting, zoom in like I did here, and then jump exactly to the part which uh, I find important or that I want to develop further. And because I see how those ideas connect, it's much easier for me to recall what I was talking about because I'm not just saying it was about vector spaces. I see that it was specifically related to semantic representations to knowledge graphs and so on. So I understand very quickly what the conversation was about because I'm thinking not only in terms of the actual concepts but also of the connections between them. So that becomes very, very useful. Another advantage of having a knowledge graph is that I can quickly edit the content of this conversation to hide the parts which I'm not interested in. So for example, here I see there's a whole topic on cultural experiences and that's maybe not something I want to talk about right now. So I'm going to select this. If I click here on the square, it will be selected, the whole topic, and then I can hide it from the graph. And as, as you can see, the whole matrix is recalculated directly. So I can see uh, uh, the other topics which are present inside the text uh, in a much more evident way. Then also Parisian landscapes is not something I'm interested in. So I'm going to hide this as well. And finally, Tokyo attractions. Let's hide that. So. There I get to the graph which represents my interests much more. Uh, it's about knowledge graphs, graph representation, vector spaces, word embeddings here. And one really powerful tool inside Infranodus that is there thanks to the knowledge graph representation is that not only I see the structure, but I also see the gaps in the structure. So if you click here on blind spots, it actually reveals to me which topics could be better connected but are not yet connected. And that is a very par powerful way to generate new ideas because if you think of a connection between two different topics that exist inside this text but are not yet very well connected, you will probably come up with a very interesting question that will connect those ideas in an interesting way. So here I'm going to select, for example, this gap between word embeddings and graph representation and I'm going to ask Infranodus to derive from this context an insight question that would link those ideas together. So I click on that button, it sends it to GPT-4, and not only it sends uh, those two topics, but it only also sends the structural information about the graph. So in the back end, it's also sending all the connections between the different entities and concepts that were developed so that the model knows much better the content of this conversation and all the semantic relationships inside. So what it's going to generate is going to be very relevant to the content of this conversation. And here it's providing me an advice. So for example, it says that I can start by identifying and instructing key entities and their relationships from the conversation, and then use pre-trained models like Berta Glow for vector representations of words, which will help in constructing the nodes and edges of your knowledge graphs, enabling semantic understanding and relationship mapping. So this is great because it gets me to the part of the conversation which was highly relevant to me very quickly, based on my own interest and based on the gaps. So it kind of looks at the conversation uh, structure and then asks what would be the gaps that you could bridge with new ideas and then it proposes me those ideas. I actually like to not generate the ideas themselves but to generate questions. This is much more interesting especially if you're learning a, uh, about a new topic. So when I click here I can ask it to not just generate uh, an idea but I can ask it to generate a question and so if I click here it's going to come up with a question that would link those two ideas together. And you can think of it as an advanced way of prompting the model because once I generate a question, how can graph-based transfer learning enhance vector representations like BERT and word to vec in constructing knowledge graphs from text, improving entity recognition and language model efficiency? So there it's a very interesting question. And in fact, I can try to answer this question myself. If I do that, I'm going to learn something interesting or I can send this question itself to the model and then I'm going to switch mode and ask it to provide an answer. So here I'm acting as an AI agent or as a human in the loop for a, an, an AI agent and I follow 
the reasoning logic with the machine in order to learn something about this topic. Because if I just provide an answer, maybe I'm not going to learn anything. But if I'm following the AI in generating the questions and then generating the answers, thinking myself about the possible responses, and then getting to the parts uh, or to the ideas that I find interesting, then I'm going to learn much more. So here provides me a very interesting response about how graph-based transfer learning can refine Barrett and word to vec vector representations, enhancing knowledge graph construction, and how it leverages similarity measures like cosine similarity to identify nuanced relationships between concepts and sort of augment uh, the graph with this additional information. So I can also save it to my notes here. If I click here, I'm going to save it to my project notes. And if I want, I can even save it into the graph itself. So for example, if I click here, it's going to save it into the graph and then highlight what I just added on the graph itself. So I can see how it connects the existing ideas. And this is also a really useful way to visualize the thinking process because if you imagine here is something that we just added right? So I can see where my thoughts are fitting into the discourse. And for example, this last statement, as you can see, it almost covers the whole graph of ideas, which means it's highly relevant because it's touching upon all the important topics, but it also connects them in a new way and especially focusing on this structural gap that we discovered. So this is why it's kind of interesting because uh, then I can really understand uh, where my thinking process is taking me. Just to show you another example, Infernodus can also visualize another gap. So, for example, here we have one between word embeddings and Neo4j database. And as you can see, Neo4j database is at the periphery. So that can be quite interesting because usually you will get to the stuff that are somehow more special and useful for learning and for discovering new things when you go beyond the limits of the knowledge. And here we have the structure of the knowledge, which is kind of like a general idea of how knowledge graphs and vector spaces relate to one another. But if we try to connect those two topics here, we will expand this context in an interesting direction. And one other advantage here, which, which is really useful, is uh, let's say if I go back to this insight here, to this gap, and then I ask it to generate a question, I can use the existing context to generate the content of this question, right? So then it's going to send the structural information about the relations between all those concepts in this particular graph. Or I can also ask it not to derive ideas from this context. So if I click here, I'm just going to reload this. If I click here, then it's going to just generate a more general question that connects those two ideas together. So here it's not basing itself in the structure of the graph, but rather takes it as an inspiration and then proposes me to think further, maybe touching upon the concepts which are not yet present here. So this kind of very flexible approach um, and the ability to sort of touch your knowledge through the knowledge graph is very useful if you want to be aware of how you're developing this discourse. You would never have this sort of feedback in an interface like this because we tend to read in a chronological way, so it becomes very difficult to keep track of actually where we are in the map of the conversation. And this graph is like a map of the conversation. So then we can also clearly see that, okay, if we add a, if we add a question, for example, here about Neo4j and word embeddings, right? So I will add it into the graph. As you see, it's highlighted here, so it connects those two clusters, and then it can help me generate some interesting answer that would then link those two concepts together. So that again can be very useful if you want to be aware of how you're developing your body of knowledge and how it contributes to the overall structure, right? So that is another advantage of having this visualization available. And also in blind spots, you have this uh, other setup, which is called uh, conceptual gateways. So here it identifies the nodes in the graph which are important gateways of this discourse to the outside world because they have high influence but they're not uh, burdened by so many connections. So that means that, for example, if I talk about those subjects, I will likely touch upon things that are important for this conversation, but if I manage to connect them in an interesting way, then I will also bring this discourse outside because as you can see, most of them are at the periphery. So they're relevant to the discourse, 
but they're not so well connected. So that means there is a high potential of developing new ideas if I focus on them. And uh, I have two options again here. I can derive an AI-generated statement from the context and then come up with some interesting idea here based on the existing context, but also connecting those uh, different terms, right? So here it's talking about how I can optimize hardware for Neo4j and for machine uh, learning tasks, which is an interesting topic at the moment anyway, right? So I can go into the hardware direction or I can also just ask it to generate something a bit more general, which is not touching upon these topics here uh, in the graph, but, but only touching upon those, those keywords. And then it's probably going to come up with something a bit more general, but that will give me a better opportunity to jump outside of this context. So this is also how you can use it. And in fact, the approach inside Infranodus is really based on this idea that if your graph is too interconnected, it's going to stimulate you and to force you to think outside of the center. So to explore the periphery, to focus on the less represented topics like these ones. And if your graph is too dispersed, then it's going to try to help you connect your ideas together. In fact, you have a topical diversity measure here that shows how connected your graph is and how diverse it is. So when the topical diversity is medium or low, it means that your, your discourse is too focused on certain ideas. So then it's going to kind of try to bring you outside of the center towards the periphery. But if this conversation was too dispersed, then we'll try to help you connect the central ideas and make it more connected. And this really goes in line with our ecological variability framework that we implemented in Infranodus using the structure of the graph to help people develop ideas in a coherent way. And it kind of diagnoses the structure of the discourse and then try, tries to propose you how you could develop it structurally so that it becomes more coherently connected. So that's how you could use this approach as well. One last thing I want to show you is that you can use the same approach not just uh, by copying and pasting your ChatGPT conversation, but by having the conversation um, inside Infranodus itself. Of course, you can copy and paste some ideas that you generate here and add them in the conversation. So for example, if I take, let's say, this one on Neo4j and hardware stuff, right? I can actually copy this and then send it as a prompt to ChatGPT. So then I could continue the conversation here inside ChatGPT and have it generate some interesting ideas for me. I think, okay, now it started to answer. So there I could use it like that and kind of bring back some ideas which I generate here or these notes which I took, I can bring them back into ChatGPT and then converse with it through ChatGPT interface. But some people like to converse with ChatGPT directly through the graph. So that's also possible in Infernodus. And to do that, you go to the apps and then start a new graph. And you can say, okay, knowledge graphs. And let's say vector representations, for instance, is just to have something to start with. And then you will have lots of different options of how you can start this conversation, but I'll say that I want to explore it with AI in the ChatGPT mode. And here you can use to have uh, only the detected entities shown in the graph. So that means that uh, you will only visualize the entities which are detected. And then when you click here, you see it detected two entities, knowledge graph and vector, and shows the connections between them and then gives me an answer directly. So for example, here it says that knowledge graph graphs excel at organizing and linking complex data, while vector representations turn this information into a format easily processed by algorithms enabling advanced analysis and machine learning applications. So it gives me a nice starter answer. And then I can go along and I can ask it, okay, so for example, how can vector representations be used to enhance knowledge graphs, for instance? That's a topic that's interesting to me. I make sure that extract entities is checked here. I add this as a question. You see it detected knowledge graphs again, and then it generates an answer. And um, in the background, it uses GPT-4, which is the same model that powers ChatGPT. So you're basically getting the same answers as ChatGPT would give you, but they're much more concise, not so verbose, and you have a direct visual feedback on this conversation. 
The advantage of this is, uh, like I said, the representation allows you to see what are the main ideas that you're talking about, but the structural information about this graph also allows then Infranodus to generate much more relevant prompts for you. So let's say I want to generate a new prompt from this small structure here. It will focus on the gap between this topic, so it identified that I'm talking about graph embeddings and data science, and then I'm going to ask it to generate a question based on this. So I'm going to click on the question here in the AI inside panel, and then it generates a question for me. And here is an interesting thing. I can actually uh, paste this question inside ChatGPT itself. So I read the question because I want to learn about this topic. I don't just want the answers. I also want to think with the model. So here I'm saying, how can vector representations within knowledge graphs enhance machine learning algorithms' ability to predict novel connections between disparate data sets? So that can be interesting. It's a kind of like a practical application of my question. I can save it into the graph and look what happens. It identifies the entities there and then it sends it to ChatGPT and ChatGPT answers to me directly and I have all of this represented visually so I can quickly see what we're talking about and I can see what the last statement was. So for example here it says that I can increase uh, the accuracy, uh, the predictive accuracy of the model by adding these vector representations into knowledge graphs. And then I can even use the graph to generate some more ideas. So for example, if I click on accuracy here and data sets and machine learning algorithms, for instance, three things, I can ask Infranodus to generate a new question for me. And if I click here, derive from this context, it's going to take into account the connections between those terms and generate something highly relevant in relation to that. So for example, here it says, how can embedding knowledge graphs in vector space improve the accuracy of machine learning algorithms by revealing previously unseen connections within data sets? Great question, actually, super relevant to the topic. So I'm gonna add it again into the model and let's see what it comes up with. Uh, and here it says that embedding knowledge graphs in vector space translates complex relationships into mathematical format uh, machine learning al algorithms can officially process, uncovering hidden patterns and connections within data sets, thus improving prediction accuracy. So that's great. Then I can jump into more technical details after I expanded on this cluster. And there I'm kind of showing you how to actually use the graph because you can either focus on the ideas that you find interesting. My fav favorite use case is to actually look for the gaps inside. So I'm trying to see like, okay, I have, let's say, machine learning, information, and algorithms. So these are three clusters on this side of the graph and then there's another one on accuracy and data sets. And they are only connected through knowledge graphs but nothing else connects them. So I can just select those nodes, they will be automatically added into my text editor and then I don't even have to think of a prompt or come up with a formulation for this. I can just save it into the graph and then ChatGPT will be forced to answer with something that would connect those ideas together. As you can see here on the graph, this last statement connects those two clusters. So I'm kind of weaving my knowledge together by pointing to the parts which are not yet connected and trying to make connections between them. If they become all connected, then I'm going to jump to the periphery. Like, for instance, here embedding is on the periphery, accuracy, machine learning. And then I'm going to ask it to generate something that would help me expand this cluster further, right? So then, as you can see, it grows and then it's talking about pattern recognition, for instance. So it's a really useful way to develop your conversation while having direct visual feedback on the structure of what you're talking about. So it becomes a, like a sculpting experience, actually. You're not only a thinker here, but you're also a sculptor and you're trying to create a shape for your idea and based on your objective you will want a different shape. If I want to learn about a certain topic I will probably want it to be well connected but I will also want it to grow because I want to touch upon more things like for instance here embedding algorithm. I'm gonna ask it to come up with something that would connect those two concepts together. I can also use the AI panel here and generate something that would come up with a new idea based on this connection. One other thing that I want to show you is that you don't have to use entity detection in your conversation. So if I type in the same query knowledge graphs and vector representation, for instance, 
I can also leave the default mode on. So I'm gonna go explore with AI, chat GPT mode, and I'm just leaving this here, the words used in text. And what will happen here is that it will visualize not the entities, but the words themselves. So my graph is going to be much more diverse and there will be many more concepts inside. And sometimes it can be useful for letting the model generate some interesting responses this way. You will have a much bigger graph, much faster. So I can ask it all kinds of questions, like uh, even something simple like that. And as you can see, it's building the graph really quickly. So sometimes you will also want to use that mode where you don't focus on the entities, but on the actual words. You will sometimes find it strange that, for example, things like knowledge graph in this case are represented as two words, like here, knowledge and graph. But in fact, it's quite useful for the, for the model because by having this more granular representation of ideas, you let it make the connections between them. And so, for example, here, when I'm adding a new connection, you see it's building um, much faster the new relations between them. And in the same way as in the previous demonstration, it sends this structural information with the model prompt. So when you generate an interesting question, for instance, it might get to some ideas that you wouldn't normally get to if you use entity detection. So I recommend you to try both, depending on what you're interested in, and hopefully you will come up with some very interesting results. You can try it out on infranodos.com. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or contact us through the support channel. And also subscribe to this video if you want to be informed about the new uh, workflows that we present in Infranodos in combination with uh, AI. Thank you very much.